Well, hello, it's Karen McDermott Rolf, Independent Advisor with Creative Memories, and I am back with my monthly technique layout and challenge. I'm going to share a scrapbooking technique with you and then challenge all of you to use the technique to create a layout. Take a photo of your layout and share it with me in Facebook at Karen's Croppers for an entry into my monthly door prize drawing. Once you're in Karen's Croppers, go to the album section and look for the album titled Technique Tuesday number 52. That will be the album that you'll add your photo to. While you're in the, the album library, take a look at all those different technique um, albums that are in there. That means there are 52 different techniques shared with you in Karen's Croppers. You can also find some of my layouts on my blog at karencrops.com. And I so appreciate any of your purchases through my Creative Memories website link at creativememories.com backslash user backslash Karen, and it's Karen with a Y. And I must mention that right now, Creative Memories is offering a very generous Black Friday promo. With a purchase of $150, you will receive your choice of three different exclusive Black Friday bundles. These bundles are super cute, you guys. It's really hard to choose a favorite. There are three great choices. And if you can't choose, you can... Um, you can make a larger purchase, so you can select more than one of the bundles. So please go to creativememories.com backslash user backslash Karen and check out the Black Friday promo. Each of those uh, promotional bundles is valued at $63, and you'll receive a bundle for free with a $150 purchase. Also, the bundle items are exclusive items, so that means Creative Memories will not be offering these items for purchase otherwise. So the only way to get those items is through this promotion. The promotion is scheduled to last through November 16th or 17th, but I think this is highly popular, and I think it's very likely that the promo items will run out before that date. So I encourage you to place your orders as soon as possible. So let's get to the, the technique for this month. It's really a, a simple technique. You're just going to need your trimmer for this and one of the decorative blades. And we're going to make this pretty fold folded treatment here that reveals some paper underneath. So I really love the little peekaboo reveal of this technique. It's super easy. There's nothing complicated about it, but it gives you such a visual impact. It's just um, really a great technique. These are the kind of techniques I like to share here on my YouTube channel, are techniques that are not too difficult that you could do quickly and get a beautiful result from. For this sample, I used our Autumn Harvest paper. So this beautiful paper with the wood grain, the cute little acorns, and then the word titles going across it. I've also embellished, I've used some of the Autumn Harvest embellishments, which unfortunately are now sold out and are no longer available. And I did use some of the Autumn Harvest stickers down here also. And then to back it and for my photo mats, I've used some of our pumpkin cardstock. So for my demo layout now, I'm going to use some different materials. I'm going to use materials from our Nordic Winter Collection, along with some dark green cardstock. So you're going to need one sheet of cardstock, and then you're going to need two pieces of designer paper. Now, for the your main piece of paper on the top, it's going to be double-sided. So keep that in mind of which side you're going to reveal with your fold. And so in this case, the acorns were on the back of the wood grained paper. And then think about a cute little print that you're going to reveal here with your folds. So I have selected these papers from the Nordic Winter Paper Pack. I think this sheet here with the pine boughs will be my major sheet. And then when it gets folded over, it's going to just reveal a little bit of kind of a brown stripe. That's going to give me some nice contrast. And then my reveal pattern is going to be this um, cue paper with the little deers and the trees. Since this is a pretty busy pattern all over, I like using it just in a small dose as that little reveal. And that way it won't be too overwhelming on the page when I'm just using a small bit of that. 
I've gone ahead and I've got my 12 by 12 inch sheet of dark green cardstock and I just cut out a section here because it, it will be covered up with the paper and then I use the cutout section to cut some mats from. So you can go ahead and do that and cut out a hollow piece from your background paper. It's just a way to conserve your paper, your cardstock, make it go further. And then it lightens up your layout a little bit by not having a, an entire another layer of paper there. So to get started, let me set these pieces aside for now. We'll come back to those. Well, I had some instructions written down, but I think I'm gonna just have to wing it. I think I could do it, right? Right. So I'm gonna set aside um, the frame for now. And let's start out with this paper here that's gonna be my, my reveal print. I just need a strip of this that's cut to four inches. Okay, four inches wide. And then I'm going to trim this down to 11 and a half. So I'm gonna take a half an inch off the bottom here. Okay, so that's four inches by 11 and a half. Okay, four inches by 11 and a half, and I'll set that aside. Now for my full sheet that's going to go on top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade out my blades and I'm going to use the scallop blade this is the scallop blade that goes with our 12 inch trimmer and I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to cut off a quarter inch from both sides using the scallop blade. And I'm gonna turn it around. A quarter of an inch is at the far right edge of the gray cutting strip on the trimmer. So I'm cutting off a quarter of an inch with the scallop blade. When you use the decorative blades with our trimmer, make sure that you press a little harder um, than normal when you're cutting with them. It needs a little extra push, and you wanna make sure that you cut all the way through your paper on your first, your first swipe, because if you don't cut all the way through and you have to come back and, and cut again, the pattern is not going to match up, okay? So just press a little extra harder. Now that we're done with the scallop blade, an important tip is to change it out immediately and get the straight blade black back in it. Sometimes I'll forget, I'll leave the decorative blade in there, I'll grab my trimmer, and then when I'm ready to, to cut, um, instead of getting a straight cut, I'm gonna get a decorative cut. I'm gonna take the piece now, so both sides are cut with the scallop blade. I'm gonna turn it on its side and I'm going to cut it off, cut off a, a half an inch, so it's 11 and a half off also. You could do that. This step before you do the scallops also, it doesn't really matter, but cut off that half an inch off of the bottom because we will have the, the pieces framed with our dark green cardstock around the edges, okay? So now we have to think a little bit about the if there was a pattern, a directional pattern on the back. And for my first layout, there was definitely the directional pattern of the acorns. The acorns are going up and down. So I wanted to make sure, so you know, make sure you, before you even start cutting your paper that you have it um, oriented correctly on the back side before you start cutting, okay? So keep that in mind. So now the scallop edges are going to be the edges here on this panel that's on the left side and the panel on the right side, okay? So this little piece here on the right side is two and a half inches wide and I need the scallop on the left edge of that. So I'm gonna use this left edge here of, with the scallop as my smaller panel. So I'm gonna place the scallop edge at two and a half inches, that's two and a half inches, and I'm going to cut that. So now the scallop is on the left edge. Now for the larger panel, it should be exactly right and ready to use, okay? Let's get our background. I think what I'll do is I'm going to do the folds next. So take your microchip scissors and a ruler, 
And since the sheet is 11 and a half inches um, long, we're gonna get the halfway point, which is five and three quarters of an inch. So here on my ruler, I can see where the five and three quarters is, and I'm just gonna give it a little snip. That's gonna help me tear it, if since um, it'll help to start the tear mark. So again, looking here and just going across, I could do the, the same thing with this side. I guess I'll just do a little something like this. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect, just in that general area of five and three quarters, okay? So let's go ahead and just make the folds. So we're going to fold out like this, and it's gonna get, your fold will get wider at the top and bottom of your strip. Just make a nice crease so you get a nice fold. And you can see by having that little snip that we made, it really helps you to, to get the fold started. So you're not tearing your paper as you fold it. There we go. And you'll see you'll have that little snip mark, but we're just gonna cover that up with some embellishments later. And then we're gonna do the same for the other sheet. Again, fold it out. And then roughly you want your fold to be the same width that you did for, for your first piece. So just kind of eyeball it. You know, it's probably not gonna be exact. I can see this is a little wider than I did there, but that's fine. And just fold it, crease it so you get a nice fold. Okay, so let's take the right, the right piece here, the smaller piece, and we're going to adhere it to our reveal piece. I'm just using some repositional tape. You could use our regular tape runner if you like. So we have the four inch piece here, and I'm going to adhere it to the far right edge of that four inch strip. looks like I had like a little bit of a, a little difference where this background paper ended up a little wider than my strip. So I'm just going to cut off that little bit here. It's just a smidge. It's not even enough to measure, but I can kind of see it. There we go. And now I'm going to adhere this whole panel to the right side of the frame. And I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch on all, all sides of the frame showing. So there's about a quarter of an inch from the top, a quarter of an inch from the bottom, and a quarter of an inch from this right side. Now, when you put your adhesive on this panel, um, well, that I did have enough of the cardstock to catch it. I was going to say, be careful about putting adhesive down the strip if you're going to be adhering over a hollow piece. So when I adhere this strip down, I have to be careful of that. that I'm just going to put the adhesive on the, the very edges, okay? These areas where the folds are, are going to be taped onto my reveal paper there, so that will catch those. But I don't need to go putting any adhesive in the middle of this, of this piece. And I just make sure that I have some in the very corners so it all lays down nicely. And now again, I'm going to adhere it so you've got about a quarter of an inch from the top, the bottom, and the, the left side. And that it's lined up here with your other piece that you've already adhered down. There you go. Isn't that cute? You've got the little deer peeking through. So pretty easy, but what, what a cute, what a cute result, right? So I have some mats already cut. My mats are six and a quarter by four and a quarter. 
This was a little piece that I just fussy cut from one of the variety mats of the Nordic um, Winter Collection, and I thought it'd make a, a nice little spot for journaling. There really wasn't a title in the stickers that I wanted to use for this, as, as I'm not sure of which photos I'm going to use. But these are the, um, some of the embellishments from this pack, and I thought I would um, layer the little deer, the doe, with her little fawn right here on top of those pine trees, something like that. And let's see, I have a little sticker I thought I could add if I wanted to kind of beef that up, maybe up there. And then I have some stickers that I thought I would add to my, my little journaling box down here. I think I'll probably want to scooch those up. There we go. So I have more room for that. So now that I have it all arranged, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start adhering the pieces down. I always like to arrange my pieces first to get the spacing correct before I start ad adhering. And the second mat. So such a lovely page. I'm sure hoping I'm going to have photos in the, the horizontal orientation to use on, on this layout. Lots of times anymore, since we're taking photos on our cell phones, I end up with way more vertical photos than horizontal. That's such a, a difference from years ago when we had to, remember, we had to force ourselves to to turn the camera around and take some vertical shots. We were always just shooting horizontally in the past, and now it's kind of the opposite. So I'm just gonna try to find a little arrangement here with the pine cone on the, on the branch, get it going in some direction that I like. And then I'm going to use foam squares behind these stickers. So I have it layered how I like it. They're sticking together. And now I have some baking soda, you guys. I use, like to use baking soda, and I just give a little light dusting on the stickers to take off the adhesive of the stickers. Um, this is important. Um, please use baking soda. It's a, a neutral substance. It's uh, acid-free, it's, it's gonna be safe in your albums to use. Please do not use cornstarch. I hear people using cornstarch, but when you look at the label, cornstarch is actually finely ground corn. So we don't want to, to use any food products in our album. And also stay away from baby powder. Um, is that in talc? Because it usually um, will contain cornstarch sometimes preservatives, sometimes fragrances. So things we, we do not really want in our albums. So now for the centerpiece here, I think I'm going to just go ahead and I'm gonna start by taping the deer to the background embellishment. So I've just put a little bit of repositional tape on the top of the, the dough, placed her there, and then a little bit here on the left edge of the, the fawn of figuring out where she might go. I'm assuming it's a she. So now this is all adhered together as one piece. And now I'm going to adhere the one big piece with foam squares. And I'm going to kind of, I'm going to use the larger ones here to fill up. A, this is a pretty large piece, so I'm going to use the larger ones to fill up some of it. And where the embellishments overlap with the deer and the tree, I'm also going to put a, a foam square there on those um, where they're layered, and that'll just kind of help to keep it keep it together a little bit. Maybe down here, probably on the deer head, maybe up on the points. If you notice, Creative Memories has recently changed our, our foam squares. Um, our previous packs. I've contained one sheet with the larger foam squares and one sheet of the smaller ones. Now, I don't know if, if you guys are like me, but I seem to go through the, the bigger ones quicker. I would, I would go through the bigger ones and then I'd have a lot of little ones left. But they've recently changed that now and they have a variety pack of foam squares. So you're getting multiple sizes in the foam squares now. 
So there's some um, medium sizes. And then there's a size that's even a little bit larger than this large size. So you're getting that the assortment of the different sizes. And so right here now where the where I folded and there you know I can very, you know I can tell where those little tears are. I'm just going to make sure that I cover that up with this embellishment piece. There we go. And then I have the sticker I was going to put underneath it and I think I'm going to just stick this flat so it'll have some more dimension from the the embellishment cluster. Kind of like that. There we go. Now I like the dimension here of the flaps. And I think I want to kind of preserve that dimension a little bit when it's in my album. You know, when it gets in the album, it'll be pushed down flat, right? But to kind of preserve a little bit of that, I'm going to place some of these large foam squares down here on the bottom end. And that's going to help to, to preserve that dimension. I don't think I need to go all up the folds. I think just right down here will be enough. But I don't know. I suppose when it is in the album, this part without foam squares would lay flat. So maybe I do want to put a few more in it. And I like that how it's going to overlap there with the photo. So I'm going to put a few more in. I'm going to use my multi-purpose tool. I should have cleaned it up since it was going to be on camera. And it's going to help me to, to position those right in there where, where I can't really reach good with my finger. So I'm just going to place it here on the, the tip of my multi-purpose tool and just slide it under, hold my finger there, and then kind of wiggle it out. So I do like that better. See, it's going to preserve that, that dimension when it's in the album. Let me give you one more. So this has come together really quickly. In the Nordic Winter Embellishment Pack, there's a, uh, a sheet of these shiny little enamel stickers, they're calling them. And I think I'll use, use one of those over here. So I'm just trying to decide if I want to use green, brown, or gold. I think maybe the gold color is just going to bring the gold color of the deer over here a little bit. There we go. I was trying to decide if I wanted one maybe there on the top or so. Maybe not. I don't know if I'm even liking that sticker so much now that I set it down there. Sometimes you can be, if you haven't really pressed really hard on your stickers, you can do as I am with the multi-purpose tool and see if you can get it up. I did get it up, but it left a little mark like that where it took some of the the color off of the paper. So I might have to just go ahead and, and stick that back down. But I th think what I'm not liking about it is the, oh, it's kind of a different artwork compared to the deer and the tree. These are a little bit watercolored and, and brushed out. And this is kind of a more solid like look. So I might look through the, the embellishments and see if there's a, another one that I like. This Nordic winter embellishments are so pretty. It's full of these little deer. There is another tree. I could add that. See, see how much better that tree looks. Do you see that as compared to the, the sticker? You know, it could just be a, a personal preference of mine too. You know, we all have a different aesthetic, different, different things appeal to, to different to us differently. And that's okay, right? Ooh. I didn't see this little star the first time through the pack. There, I could do something like that. I think I'm liking that better. So see what I mean about playing? Lots of times I like to, to play a little bit with the, the stickers and the embellishments. So I think I am going to, again, just to have that dimension, I'm gonna stick the single tree down flat. I'm gonna cover up that spot that I ruined with the sticker. And then I'm going to get a foam square to use for this big star. And I'm going to put that on my tree like this. There we go. What do you guys think? I like that. I like it quite a bit. 
Let me make sure, whoops, I got out of frame a little bit. That happens, it scooched up. But let me just bring it close for you. You can see this embellishment cluster that I created. And then down below, so I think that's really pretty. I love that little reveal of the deer, the deer paper. So let's just uh, take a look at both of the layouts right now. Let me scooch it over and I'll bring back my autumn harvest layout. And you can see them both. So I'm going to be really excited to see your versions of this technique when you share them in Karen's Croppers with me on Facebook. That's going to be the fun part. For an entire month, we're going to see all the different layouts that everyone shares, all the different variations. You know, you could use a different decorative blade for your edge. You could even punch a, a little edge or a strip with the border maker system and put a little piece there of border on your folded pieces. Um, you know, you could use any different papers. So we're going to see lots of different variations of this there in the album in Karen's Croppers. If you guys like the techniques and layouts that I share with you here on YouTube, I ask that you please subscribe to my channel. That will help me to be seen by more people. And when you subscribe and you click the little bell icon, Facebook will give you a notification every time that I add a new video. So that's a little bonus too. All right, everyone, have a great month. Have fun creating your layouts. I cannot wait to see them. And don't forget about Creative Memories Black Friday promo.